Welcome to the 77th episode of the Friday Nightmares podcast. I am one half of your hosting team, that bitch, Heather Powell from Burlington, uh, from Burlington, wow, I went back in time wow. there, from Waterdown, Ontario, Canada. And with me, as always, is... Mr. Smoke Show Crawford, coming to you from the town of Swartz Creek in the county of Genesee, in the state of Michigan, in the United States of America, in the North American continent, in the Western Hemisphere, on the planet Earth, in the Milky Way galaxy. Fully vaxxed, boosted, and waxed, and ready to climax, and if you can, please get me wet and feed me after midnight. I'm the man with the glorious beard, a.k.a. Mother of Cats, a.k.a. the man with the humongous ego, a.k.a. Scott Housen, a.k.a. Scotty Too Hottie, a.k.a. Spanky, a.k.a. the Golden God, a.k.a. the man with the greatest, hugest, largest, sexiest intro in the podcasting world. What's going on? Probably. Like, honestly, you probably definitely have the longest. I could make a coffee, drink the coffee, (laughs) and come back and you would still be talking. And I'd be masturbating while talking and it'd still be going. (laughs) Who, who, where is the dude that used to have to pre-drink before we would record because he would be so nervous? I I think the, (laughs) uh, the us happened and you are the tethered and you got switched because it's crazy how much more confident you are now. Yeah, I'll say, you know, the more you do something, the better you feel about it, the better you become. Well, maybe not the be- not maybe not better, because I don't think I'm better at podcasting, but I'm much more confident. In well, we could always ask, show that ask Erica if that's true for other things in your life, I guess. <laughs> oh, good Lord. At picking movies is what uh, I meant, Scott. Uh, I'm a very, you know, I expect for you two to keep yourselves pure until marriage. I already have a chest seat belt on. <laughs> She's like, why are you wearing this? It's called the Iron Donger. <laughs> She's like, what the fuck is wrong with you? <laughs> I gotta tell you what, wearing it in the middle of winter, in the negative degree temperatures, that shit gets cold down there. Like, wouldn't your, would your cock stick? to the fucking metal no it'd be like, like what little... if you got like a little wet down there like what if you didn't wipe off all the pee pee and like <laughs> be, if i soon as i stepped out in the cold <laughs> it'd be like a turtle head it'd be like an innie okay so you know how i found out that guys shake their dick after they piss I, like uh, right, the someone same, did a I helicopter didn't... dick in front of you no the song there's a song that's like shake it once that's fine shake it twice that's okay Shake it three times, you're playing with yourself again. You know, give up the grudge, better shut your mouth. Why you gotta judge everybody? You don't know the song, do you? I swear to God, did you, like, not listen to any fucking popular music? I listened to good music. I'm pretty sure it was Good Charlotte. Hold on, let me Google it quickly. Give up the grudge. Oh, Gob. Sorry. By Gob. Basically, Good Charlotte only. Gob? You don't know who Gob is? Fuck sakes. What did you do? Did you just sit there and listen to, like, one band and play Magic when you were a teenager? Gob, no. Good Charlotte? No, I listen know. to good music, like heavy metal. Oh, fuck off. You listen <laughs> to good music. <laughs> fuck off. You listen I listen to, good to music, music with talent. <laughs> yeah, like, you also like House of Snooze, known as the House of Black from wrestling. Hey, House oh, of Black is God. badass. You're the only person in the world that doesn't like them. All right, we all got tattoos, and we think it's 2000, and we're so emo. Mm, we're so angry. We're going to speak in riddles and rhymes because no one's ever done that. <clears throat> Bray Wyatt, 2013. Um, 2013 called. They want their promo back. Um, honestly. Uh, it's all right. It's okay, Heather. Pat on head. I know. You're, I just, know. you're just upset because of, of their, their success. Oh, I don't care. <laughs> at all. I don't care at all. Clearly, I don't care at all. We are going, speaking of wrestling, I know this is a horror movie podcast. I know we've talked about Cox and I've talked about, you know, <laughs> Gob, who Scott didn't know about. And what are you eating? Oh, my God. Is that like, is that a, you're just putting a fucking sausage in your mouth right now? What sure is that? Did. It looks like a penis. What the fuck are you eating? Mm. Mm. Is that a pepper? Is that a pepperoni? It's a pickled sausage. <laughs> it's a pickled sausage. Oh, man. Tim Davis. He could see what you're doing right now. Tim Davis, this is for you. Do you know he likes bears? <laughs> I do. I love that story. That story had me in fucking stitches. Tim is so hot, though. I would totally, if I was, oh, fuck, I would hit on him. Even if I had a dick or I identified as a man, I would definitely be hitting on him, too. 
If I if I did identify as a man, I would want to get the biggest dick ever. Hmm. You know what I mean? Like I would definitely want to be like fucking big dick energy, walking around, swinging in my car. I would have to buy a Dodge Ram and not pack, park it properly. What else? Rev the engine all the time. I get a tap out t shirt that I would wear all the time. <laughs> Gotta, gotta get the Oakley sunglasses. <laughs> All right. And then have someone post date night with this cutie. <laughs> Gonna get railed tonight. Mmm, railed. Anyway, we're having a wrestling podcast. Well, we're gonna be recording it in a couple of weeks, and oh yeah, it will be, be all uh, oily and slick. And Tim and I are gonna be in a ring <laughs> rubbing each other down. It's gonna be amazing. Yeah. Oh wait. Exactly. Oh, not that type great. of wrestling. Shit. Shit. No. Oh, well, we could. Fuck. Hey, whatever works, right? Make better some writing than some of the writing on AEW and WWE. So, hmm. uh, we are going to be having one night stand too. Yep. Like. <laughs> <laughs> episode uh tim davis rob humphreys myself and scotty will be back to talk about things all wwe tim will talk about how he wants a 18 hour storyline for every single wrestling match in order for him to be entertained um, um i'll make actually, fun of gonna, him about it we're gonna call it one night stand two uh here babe G- get yourself a taxi <laughs> here, babe, get yourself a taxi keep the change or tip them <laughs> whatever you decide to do <laughs> i apologize that was I didn't mean to cough there. My apologies for anyone that was listening to that. Um, I'm still getting over the cold I had from two weeks ago. Hangs on like a lingerer. But anyway, we will be doing the wrestling podcast. But in the meantime, we have some we have some movies. We have we have some movies to talk about, don't we, Scotty? We sure do. Not as many as last time, I don't think. But we still got a decent amount. You know, we got a fair amount. And I got to say, hashtag Netflix, man. This is a fucking episode of Netflix. We're going to be yeah, crazy, blowing the right? fuck out of Netflix in a little bit here. But we'll get first to uh, the first movie, uh, Bringing Out the Fear. So this is an 87-minute runtime. Walk into your nightmares. A couple struggling to fix their doom relationship gets lost in a dangerous forest that refuses to let them escape. This is very much a low-budget film. It's okay. It is interesting enough. Um, I put it on here because I thought Scott may enjoy it because it's very much relationship horror, but he's, like, in love and shit now. So, like, the Scott that used to be, like, emo and was like, oh, I just want love. It's all like, hi, hi, baby. That's my baby over there. Mm, I'm so in love. So, like, I don't know if he feels that way anymore. I don't know. Do you still like relationship horror? Oh, fuck yeah, dude. I, I, that shit's that shit's my bread and butter. That and one of the movies on here, a sub theme that we'll be talking about soon. Oh, gay porn? Yeah, absolutely. Fuck I know yeah. <laughs> Only with Tim Davis, though. All the bears. Mm, all the bears. I do like bears. I think bears are fucking hot. I love man that's all, like, you know, bigger and bearded. And, mm, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Bring oh, me off so a piece of I. shit. Come here, Tim Davis. Honestly, honestly, that's my, that's my go-to. I like men with... Weight to them, you know, a little bit of weight to them. I, well, not even a little bit. I like a lot of weight too, so it's all good here. Anyway, bringing out the fear. <laughs> it's a couple movie. It's about a couple that obviously explores their relationship while they get lost in the woods. It's it's very much heavy in dialogue. Unless you're really into relationship horror, like Scotty, I wouldn't necessarily recommend it. But it's a good low budget film done reasonably well. It is available on iTunes, Google Play. Voodoo, YouTube, and Hoopla, if you are interested. Hoopla. Now, have you seen this next one? Uh, it is no. Stranger. All right. This one here, fucking most disappointing ending I've ever <laughs> seen in a long time. So this is called Stranger. It is an 80-minute runtime. John and Rebecca drive up to a cabin in the woods near for some peace and quiet. A stranger becomes increasingly intrigued by their presence. Little do they know they'll soon be forced to play a deadly game. It is so stupid. This is such a dumb movie. It starts off where you think it's going to be one thing. And then the last 20 minutes, they introduce a villain that doesn't even make sense with the other things that have happened up to this point. I think I put this on here because I feel like this is something that Shudder will pick up. Or, like, somebody's going to watch it. Because now it's the cool thing to watch shitty movies and say they're good. This is not a good film. <laughs> it's really not. I I didn't mind the acting, but the plot really made no sense. But I do want Scott to watch it so if he can tell me it also made no sense to him either. But the first, like, hour of it is just these guys settling into their airbnb and it's really quite unnecessary and long but 
We watched the screener. It's not available anywhere yet. It's called Stranger. I really don't recommend it. If you see it, skip over it. There's another movie called The Stranger on Netflix that looks a lot better. I think I mistaked this one for that one. Don't make the mistake I did. Watch The Stranger. Looks like a much better film. Fair enough. I'll say, yeah. Uh, I'll, I'll try to check this out at some point if you, you're curious in my thoughts. So I'll have to. Yeah, I want to hear what you have to say. I, I like it when you agree with me. I don't like it when you don't. So <laughs> if it's if you agree with me, then you tell me. If you don't, then I rather not know. If I don't, I'm going to bring it up on the podcast just so we can have some good. Of course ones. you are. Of course you are. <laughs> All right. So the next one you have not had a chance to see yet. No, but I do want to live that bear's life. Yeah, I'll say, what do you get when you give an apex predator a large quantity of cocaine? And you make a movie about large apex predator snorting large amounts of cocaine. You get cocaine bear. So Eric and I got to go see this in theaters uh, two weeks ago. Yeah, Eric awesome. does his girlfriend in case you haven't been following along with the most recent Friday Nightmares. <laughs> yeah, she is. But uh, I seen the trailer for this. Like, we talked about it on like you know films that we were hyped for coming up, and the trailer sold me, you, and Brandon for sure when we watched it. I know Erica was sold as soon as she seen the trailer. This movie fucking delivered for me. Like, I mean, she I... didn't go in there going, "Oh, where's all the bears?" Oh, oh no, that's, that's Tim kind of Davis. Bears. That's <laughs> Tim likes bears a lot. They're the he coolest. Does. <laughs> he, his nipples are hard talking about it they are they are but uh now this was the trailer you know sometimes trailers represent a movie to try to sell it and ends up not being you know what the trailer represented now what you see in this trailer is what you get it is a bigger budget b movie animal attack film about nice. a bear that snorts cocaine the dialogue is fucking funny yeah there's uh, some cgi spots with the bear there hmm iffy but not terrible a lot of just uh cool little easter eggs that erica was pointing out to me because i was just going "Ooh, bear and she's pointing out everything else behind it and uh, <laughs> oh um, it's nice that she took you to watch the movie yeah, it's nice was, that you had an adult with you i was clapping was <laughs> she was like you, you probably were you were probably just like i went to the movie theater with the girl did you guys know that my girlfriend they're like yeah you come in all the time dude we're glad that you're not here by yourself I'm just kidding. Uh, Did they actually know you at that movie theater? Do you go uh, in there not, frequently enough that they know who you are? No, that, uh, more than likely they would recognize me at the Flint one because I go to that one mm -hmm. a lot for like the matinees. But no, we went to the nicer theater that you and I went to way back in the day for. Oh, uh, 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 so you were you people. treated her right? You were like, baby, we're not gonna get shot today. <laughs> we're gonna go Damn to the right. theater. And and we uh. <laughs> We got the nice, we got the nice uh, luxurious reclining seat. Oh, fuck oh, yeah, you did. How many eggs? Did you get a big bucket of popcorn? Oh, fuck yeah, places? I did. Fuck yeah. Mm. A giant pop that, like, fucking was the size of my damn head, but technically yeah. I was drinking. Uh, Almost the size of your cock. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was slurping it up with my cock. Yeah. That's how big of a dick I would want if I was a dude, if I could become I, I a man, for sure. Like I guess you'd pass out, right? Every time it got, like, erected? Yeah, all the blood would rush there. Oh, uh, I feel like Yeah, then I couldn't enjoy sex. Oh, yeah, for sure. Anyway, back to cocaine bears. Sorry. <laughs> We're talking about snacks and dicks. And, oh, but and, yeah, and... this is just a fun fucking movie. Uh, it it knows what it is and just has fun with it and just goes fucking ape shit balls to the wall. There are a little bit of slow parts as they introduce all the characters that end up coming into the film. But, man, when it gets going, it's funny as shit. The little boy in this film is just hilarious, has some of the best one-liners ever. And, yeah, some good gore. I mean, hell, you get a fucking bear snorting a line of coke off of a uh, severed foot. <laughs> Fuck yeah. Fuck yeah, oh. you do. I like it. Yeah, I need some coke right now. Shit. I'm too tired. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, this film, I, if you get a chance to see it in theaters, I recommend it because you don't get too many animal attack films in theaters nowadays, and this was just a fucking treat. I loved it. It's, it is competing for my number two spot at the top, at this moment. Hey, that's saying something. And props to Elizabeth Banks, one of her many directed movies, and uh, yeah. what a fun one to direct that people like. You know, I think that that's cool. And I think when you walk into a movie like Cocaine Bear, you're right. You know what you're walking into. You're walking into, and like, 
as you said about the CGI, CGI, who fucking cares? You know what right. I mean? Like, honestly, it's, it's not supposed to be serious. It's not like it's playing it seriously, like something like the Meg that's right. trying to play it serious, right? Like, this is playing it silly. It's a step, I think, um, horror of dummies did it best. Like, dummies of horror? The idea, dummies of horror. Fuck, you know what? Tim Davis said it best, our god and savior, um, when he said that it's a step above Sharknado. Right? Oh, it's definitely way better than that. Oh, it's way better than that. I like Sharknado. I think oh, it's Oh, I hate Sharknado. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. That's yeah, interesting. This, this is up there as one of my favorite creature features. Like, probably at least, like, I'd say top ten creature features ever. You know what my favorite creature is? Rob Humphreys. He is a creature. We're going act to act out We're gonna act out the shape of water, only it's going to be about a troll. And he's uh... <laughs> <laughs> Anyway. But isn't he short? Trolls are taller. Yeah, no. Oh, shit, no. He's a, he's a, well, ooh, yeah, good point. He'd be a gnome. A, he'd be a gnome. Yeah, he's a garden gnome. Yeah. Oh, my little garden gnome. <laughs> Even though Aww. him and I are the same height. <laughs> I know. I've totally made it that he's, like, this midget. People are going to meet him in person and be like, Heather made it sound like little you were person. four foot. Oh, sorry, right. A little person. Even You're going to make him too sound much like. Dummies of horror. I know. That's the problem with that. Show. Well, you heard the offensive thing they said of it. They compared me to. Oh God, <laughs> my jaw fucking dropped. Right? Yeah. Apparently, I'm just like Chris Chris Banois, according to Tim Davis. <laughs> You're right. I gotta stop listening to that show. It takes all the woke out of me. It does. Darren would be very disappointed with my lack of woke. That's all I can say. Definitely. I say. I... Darren and I are going to have to have a conversation about this now. We are. I'm going to have to stop listening to, is it Dummies yep. of Horror? Yep. Okay. Fuck, I don't like that name. I wish they changed it for me and made it more easier for me to remember because I'm the most important person, clearly, that if That's I true. can't remember it, then it's not a good name. Now, did Erica like Cocaine Bear as much as you did? Uh, yeah, she had a blast with it. Yeah. Was it long enough? How long was it? You didn't say the time. Oh, uh, I, I forget. That. I didn't actually bring it up on my phone, but let me. Oh, no, phone. that's OK. Look it up. I'm curious to how long they did it for. I, I'm hoping it was under the two hour. Yeah, it's definitely because... under the two hour mark. I can tell you that much. Okay, uh, good. Let's see. I'm trying to find my watches here. There it is. Nee, 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 nee. I'm surprised Tim didn't find a way to compare it to Jaws. I think he did, actually. Oh, for but... fuck's sakes. Honestly, I feel like he has an unhealthy problem. He does. Just kind of like me with, with my obsession. gremlins problem. Yeah. I, well, no, no. Uh, you don't bring up gremlins nearly as much. True. Um, yeah. But the runtime on this is 95 minutes. 95 minutes. That's good. That's an hour and 35 minutes, then. That's not too bad. Yeah, perfect. Nice, short, sweet, to the point. Because, I mean... You don't drag out a movie like that. You just no. go for it and just have fun. And it, yeah, fucking blast. I can't, I can't wait to rewatch it again. Oh, so do you think this is one that you would purchase? I know you're not really into purchasing as much anymore, but yeah. would you? Yeah, I definitely yeah? would. Like, you if like I that started much, huh? rebuying my collection, Cocaine Bear would be on that list. Excellent. Well, there you go, Eric. I know you got some birthday gifts that you can get, Scotty. Cocaine Bear is apparently <laughs> right there 4K. on the list. In 4K. <laughs> Fuck, wow. Whoa. <laughs> you hear that, Eric? 4K. Yes. Make sure you get him exactly what he wants. He's a princess. So I know he, he's so cute. He's so in love and shit. I don't know. I don't know what happened to Angry Scott. You know, this is a whole new Scott we're seeing here. The loving Scott, the happy Scott. It's great. Scotty Boy has turned a new leaf. Right? Soon he's going to talk about his love for Scream. He's going to talk about that he actually does like Skin Marink. I was going to say, Scream 6 surprisingly looks good. And it's been getting really good reviews from websites, which I'm kind of shocked by. Like oh, well, we'll nine out of see, ten right? good what good reviews. Oh uh, well, that seems a little high for a screen film, but that's yeah. kind of what I'm going. Okay, <laughs> I'm curious. You know, that's that's a little inflated, I think, for a screen film. But hey, well, the film that we both watched, and this comes into Netflix, so we're going to be talking a lot about Netflix. Uh, this um, one we're going to watch. I have not seen this one yet. I thought you watched this one. No, not yet. Mom, my apologies. Okay, well, we're going to generally talk about Netflix for a fair amount of movies today. I guess the one I'm going to talk about first is Unlocked. This is a 117-minute runtime. Uh, a woman's life is turned upside down when a dangerous man gets a hold of her lost cell phone and uses it to track her every move. This is technology horror. Basically, what would happen is if you lost your cell phone, you would think a good Samaritan returned it, but Actually, they did not. They just cloned it, and now they are stalking you to dangerous effects. So 
this is very much falls in the stocking genre of horror. So if you enjoy that kind of genre, you will enjoy this film. This film is available in dubbing as well as subtitles. So you can watch it how you prefer. I had a good time with it. I don't think it's the strongest horror movie that's come out this year. Um, I thought it was a good enough thriller. I don't think it's going to be on a top 10, but fuck was it entertaining. So if you have Netflix and you're like, man, I just really wish I had something to watch. I do recommend giving this a shot. And the movie is unlocked. This was South Korean. I think so. Yeah. I'll say there was um, a lot of international films this year. It looks South Korean to me. Not that I'm an expert. Um, but yeah, it was it was quite quite good. On South Korean films, I, nothing takes the place of Project Wolf Hunter so far. That movie yeah, was bonkers. That. But uh, yeah, and, and oh, fuck, I can't believe they're remaking Train to Busan of Last Train from New York or something like that. I mean, you can't believe it. I mean, come on now. <laughs> like I said, and I'm not usually one to shit on American remakes, but I just I don't know. Who knows? Maybe it will be good. I don't even know who they have starring in it yet. So who knows? Maybe I'm being in my own judgment here and not giving something its fair shake. Yeah, I just hate the uh, title, Last Train to New York or whatever it's called. I'm like, uh, uh. <laughs> like snooze fast, right? So um, snooze fast, just like just like House of Black and they wrestle. Oh hell no, um, House of Black. Hell woman. no, hell no. All right, next film. It's also a Netflix. -y. You saw this one though. We talked I about sure it. I did. I'm pulling it up right now, so I so I can talk about it if you want. Oh well, it is your turn. I want to be fair. Share is okay. ease. Okay. So Please. the next film is uh, on Netflix, and it is The Strays. A black woman's meticulously crafted life of privilege starts to unravel when two strangers show up in her quaint suburban town. So. I really got into this movie. Like I was thinking, mm -hmm. I'm like, I'm like, okay, this is decent. It's got a good mystery to it. Like it was just kind of like, but as every little thread of her life started to get become unraveled, I'm going, oh shit, I really need to know what's going on now. Like it just started, it just like kind of lures you in just a, oh yeah, a little bit at a time, and then just kind of sucks you in by the third act. And this movie was like had no right to be as good as it is and be on Netflix. Yeah, like this had How a lot Shutter of... How Shudder did pick this up is fucking beyond me. Well, was this made by Netflix? That's what I'm wondering. Maybe. I. It's a British film because um, they even referenced London a whole bunch of times in it. I'm sure in there. I think they're access. in Chester, right? And fuck this movie. And I recommended this movie to Lance Lanford from The Horror Returns. He was looking for something to watch on Netflix. And he's like, is it horror? And I said, well, I think it is. And he was like, he's like, he messaged me the next day and he was like, I wasn't prepared for that. Mm -hmm. nice. Because Scott knows what I'm talking about. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This movie will go places that you're like, what the fuck? Like, <laughs> it's, yeah. 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 It's like, it's hard to really talk a lot about it without like giving away spoilers but this is one that i think it may not be in people's top tens but this is definitely one that i think everybody needs to watch because it is just it's just fascinating and it's good like it just everything just kind of like you're just everything that happens every little reveal of like just what's going on in this story just like what the fuck oh wait hold up what wait what no <laughs> like it's just constantly like yeah like lance it is said to you I was not prepared for it. It's so like, what the fuck? It will probably be in my top 23 or 20 for me personally. Um, and for a free watch on Netflix sitting at 100 minutes in length, you got nothing to lose. Um, yeah. This is, I think, the strongest film that has come out on Netflix this year. And Netflix has very good horror comedies typically. We've, we've seen some really great ones over the years. All My Friends Are Dead. Um, the trip. Uh, we've seen a lot of really good stuff come from Netflix and when it comes to the horror comedies. But I think that in terms of a fairly serious horror film um, that's mixed with thriller, fucking chef's kiss, man. This was a really, really solid film. If there's this one and one other one we're going to talk about here that are definitely high up on like good ones to watch for Netflix. I agree. I agree. So I watched another Netflix film. Uh, this one is called White Noise. It is 136 minutes too long. Uh, <laughs> Jack Gladney, a professor of Hitler studies at the College on the Hill, husband to Bebet and father to four children, stepchildren, is torn as under by a chemical spill from a rail car that releases an airborne toxin. So this may be a little too real for the people of Ohio right now. 
uh, forcing Jack to confront his biggest fears in his own mortality. Um, I watched this movie because Adam Driver was in it and Don Cheadle. They are great. Okay, they are exceptional actors. But this script for me was overly trying to be clever, overly trying to be smart, overly trying to be funny, really playing on the pandemic side of like a a natural disaster. And it just wasn't for me. That being said, it has a 3.0 rating on Letterboxd. So obviously I am in the minority because a lot of people liked this movie. Uh, do I recommend it? I don't know. I didn't really enjoy it, so I have a hard time recommending it. And I didn't think Fair it enough. was very horror. But hey, you know what? If you're looking for, if you're a big fan of Adam Driver and John Cheadle and you want to watch their work, they are excellent in it. So it is available on the Netflix, and it is called White Noise. Yeah, so yeah this is one that I was talking to you about, and you're like, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I was I unless you're a huge Adam Driver fan, and I'm talking like huge Adam Driver fan, I would say skip it. Okay. All right. So the next one is not a Netflix film, but we will get back to those. Um this one is Spoonful of Sugar. Makes the medicine go down. Medicine. <laughs> but uh Millicent working on her thesis about children with severe allergies is hired to babysit little Johnny, a sickly mute child who suffers from every allergy under the sun. As she discovers Johnny's dark family secrets, things begin to become unhinged. Uh, this movie was interesting. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like, That's a good way to describe it. This almost gave me A24 vibes. Yes. Yes. Like, it kind of almost felt a lot Or of IFC Midnight films. Yes. Like, it has just that, like, when you're watching them, like, this could have been, like, a good double feature with, like, St. Maud. And, uh... But yeah, I found this to be very interesting. The acting is all really good. Um, mm-hmm. It's one of those, like, kind of, a, it's a slow burn. And you're yep. just kind of, once again, one of those where it's just kind of leaving you wondering what is going on. Um, it's got some creepy moments to it that are, like, especially in her, like, when she's dreaming and stuff like that. Like, some of the imagery yep. it shows there is really creepy. In a, uh, but yeah, I found this to be very interesting, like not amazing, but it was good enough that, yeah, I was hooked to the story and just kind of wanting to see how it unfolds. And it unfolds in some interesting ways that I did not anticipate. I think that's a good way to describe that, Scott. It It is a very well-made movie. This is a movie that is very much a shutter film. I feel like because Scott and I, generally speaking, watch all of the Shutter exclusives. I think there's only maybe one or two we'll skip a year because they just look painfully boring. Right. Um, we watch a lot of stuff from Netflix, a lot of stuff from Prime, and all the theater releases. I think we we haven't missed any theater release yet. And this is a Shutter film. When I say that, I'm like, if you are a regular watcher of Shredder and you watch all of their exclusives, you'll watch this movie and be like, yep. Shutter picked this shit up early in the year. <laughs> this is an early release Shutter film. Yeah, that's not um, saying it's a bad thing. No, it's just there's a certain type of film. I almost find they release sometimes a theme at the beginning of the year, and then they kind of the get like, yeah, you know what I mean? Like it's kind of it's anyway. This is a well-made film. It is very interesting. It's very sexual. Mm-hmm. A lot of sexual yeah. stuff. There's some pretty heavy content in this, so. I don't know, maybe a little bit of a warning here. There is some sexual abuse, one could say. Yeah. That's consensual yeah. to some a, some extent, but not to some others. Um, it's a very, very interesting film. I think this is definitely worth a watch. I don't know where people will fall on this. Like, I really yeah. don't. Yeah, like, I could see people going either way with this. Loving it, hating yeah. it, or just being in between. Like, it's kind of hard to tell with this one. Yeah, it's a really, like, up there kind of film. I will say I enjoyed it. I'd probably give it a 6 out of 10. I thought it was entertaining. I think Scott liked it a little bit more than I did. Um, yeah, because I'm, like, at about a 6.5, 7 out of 10. Right, but it's 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 decent, and it's available on the Shuddy. It's available on all the Shuddies, and it's available on AMC. So if you have subscriptions to those channels, and you know you're an avid horror movie watcher, I would say to you definitely watch this film. You're not going to regret your time with it. Yes, Tim Davis. If you guys get it in you know Aussie land, I recommend watching it. 
Yeah, I don't know, know if you're going to love 20, it. Watch in 2035 <laughs> when you guys finally yeah. get it. You know, after 2035. watching Jurassic Park. Well, it's not an Australian film, so they may actually get it. So That's, that's true. That's right? true. I don't know. I'd be interested in your Tim's thoughts on this. I don't even know where he would fall on this. This is a hard one to predict. Yeah, I'm on Letterboxd right now, and he has not watched it. There's only five friends of mine that have watched it and, like, actually, like, rated it, which is kind of shocking for all the podcasting friends I follow. Only yeah. two of them are podcasters. The other ones, I'm not sure. They're just people that followed me back. But the reviews are four, three and a half, three and a half, one and a half, and two. So that's kind of telling you where it's at. Yeah, it's pretty high, actually. I think that's pretty fair reviews. Well, one I mean, and a half, I don't know. One and a half and two. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then maybe it's just not your thing, right? So, like, yeah. um, but it is a high-quality film, and it is available on the Shuddy, and it is a spoonful of sugar. So our next one, unless you want to say anything else about a spoonful of sugar, nope. my friend. So you can go nope. on that one. All right. We have a ghost. We do? This is a – we do. We have Shit. a ghost. It is This movie is 127 – minute runtime it is available on the netflix after kevin finds a ghost named ernest haunting his new home he becomes an overnight social media sensation when kevin and ernest go rogue to investigate the mysterious ladders past they become the targets of the cia what a fun little horror film this is good family friendly horror and yeah, i'll see what scott say, has to say yeah this was i think you and i both described it as cute and heartwarming yeah like it's got some really good actors in it uh yes david harbour is uh ernest the ghost um and then uh, i forget her name but uh she was the aviator in uh army of the dead but yeah she's a good comedian but yeah there's a lot of recognizable faces in here and uh yeah this this was just it ran a bit longer than probably she could have they could have cut it down a little bit but yeah all in all like i found this to be a fun yeah cute heartwarming film that is easy for introducing people to horror to horror comedies because it is 100%. it's not really scary at all it's not it's cute if there's something like you have some kids over um and they're maybe just getting into horror or you have a friend that kind of just wants to watch something entertaining this is a good movie it's a little long at 127 minutes it yeah. probably didn't need to be as long as it was but it's heartwarming, it's enjoyable, and you know what? Netflix does this. They drop these sweet movies. Typically, this would be something they would drop around Halloween. I'm surprised that they're dropping it so early, right? Um, right? This would typically, to me, be something they would do then. Because didn't they do that other one last year around Halloween about the decorations that come to life? Yeah, Curse of Bridge Hollow. You Right? So this kind of reminds me of that kind of flavor, right? Yeah. Like, you're not going to be offended. It's It's nothing horrible, but it's fun. So it is available on Netflix, and if you have the Netflix, I do recommend checking it out. Yep, same. Like, it's just an easy watch and just, yeah, entertaining. Yeah. Um, and so I will jump on to the next one. Uh, this one, it appears, is not available anywhere to watch yet, so it's a screener copy. Our good old buddy, uh, Tim Davis. Have you guys heard of him? I don't think we talk about him enough. Oh, man, but, uh, we talk about him like he's our fucking, like, trouble. I mean, I mean he is my boyfriend. He is your boyfriend. <laughs> but, uh... He recommended in our chat group to check this movie out because he really dug it. And I know you got to watch it before I did, but mm -hmm. then, like, I ended up watching it. So I'll just jump into it right now. But it's uh, Unwelcome. Uh, take, uh, the tagline is Break a Promise, Pay the Price. Ah, I kind of like that one. Um, Londoners Maya and Jamie escape their urban nightmare to the tranquility of rural Ireland, only to discover malevolent, murderous gnomes goblins lurking in the working in the gnarled ancient wood at the foot of their new garden when heavily pregnant maya's relationship with a local family turns sour who or what will come to her rescue and what extremes will she go to to protect her unborn child so right off the bat one thing i noticed about this film or well, one thing i found out was this was directed by the guy that did the irish folk horror or irish horror film horror comedy grabbers that we covered on our irish episode uh you know half half a year ago at this point um so i was expecting it to be just a silly ridiculous comedy it's got some some minor funny moments but this is more legit straight horror film and it has some really dark moments to it um mm -hmm. well one thing i will say is it definitely dives into like celtic folklore of gnomes and like leprechauns and stuff like that it dives into that but it also when you're watching it i noticed that they had some type of lighting or filter on it that made it feel like you're almost watching a fairy tale like it just yes it was just yes. slightly off where it just felt like almost dreamlike 
And yes. the acting in it, there was a couple of recognizable actors, and I'm not sure of their names off the top of my head, but I know uh, one was Hodor from Game of Thrones, and uh, the other one, he was in another, I think he's a famous Irish actor, but I've seen him in It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia when they went to Ireland. Uh, oh, there it is, uh, Colm Meany. But uh, yeah, this was, for me, this spoke the Scotty language. This was, for one... Little, it was little creatures, so it was a creature feature with a little creature, so gremlins, ghoulies, critters, munchies, that type of shit, which I already love that. That's awesome, because we haven't seen a movie like that in forever. Uh, another thing is fairy tale folklore, so of course, I fucking love it. It's Irish. I seem to love a lot of Irish horror films. Did you know and, it's Ireland? Uh, you did? I want to go back now, because Lance is right. I should have done more of the... Um small towns and like small mm. villages and stuff. I didn't get a chance to do that. I think I'll stay in Corkstown next time I go because this shit is real. Like there are people that believe in this stuff in Ireland and they don't yeah. like the English. That's not overstated either. Like there's a lot of resentment between the English and the Irish. I so, believe it. Yeah. And, and I didn't think it was that big of a deal till I went there and I was like, Oh fuck. Okay, yeah. There is some. Um, right. But yeah, like uh, they, they, they have like their Celtic folklore is all about the Fae, which is, I love that. And so, yeah, that would be cool to like learn that. Like, Mm -hmm. just right. Like, yeah, go to smaller towns and stuff like that. But, um, all right, I'm, I'm going to stop talking and let you talk, but I just got to say this movie was fucking awesome. I loved everything about it. This is the one film cocaine bear is fighting for number two spot with. Wow. I, I did not like it as much as Scott did, uh, but I will give a shout out to Colin Meany. Uh, always great to see him in stuff. He's a very recognizable actor. He'll come on the screen and you'll be like, oh, that guy. Yep. yep. <laughs> right? Um, I thought the acting in this was awesome. I generally thought the plot was good. The last 10 minutes didn't do it in for me. I thought it was cheesy. Scott did not. Um, but overall, the the opening scene was actually very emotional for me, too. And I kind of want to, like, give a warning. There's some pretty hardcore violence that happens in the beginning. And yeah, it's, which was it's shocking for the on, on a pregnant woman, which made me uncomfortable. <laughs> I don't yeah. know, because of having a friend that's pregnant right now, I'm just more hypersensitive to this stuff. But it definitely affected me. So I just figured I'd make a shout out in case someone else is affected by it. Um, it's, it's a very, very well done film. This will be a great film when it is released. I think this is definitely a shutter material, um, that it could be picked up by the shuddy. So hopefully it is. Um, yeah, I look forward to seeing it when it comes out, wherever it comes out. Yep. And this is another one that I would definitely add to my collection. Right. It is. It's a good film. It may not be in my top 10, but I think it's a very, very good film. And I like how it didn't shy away from folklore i still think the irish do folklore probably some of the best ways possible um, well and i think part of that is because their folklore is all about the fae and the fae have a very fascinating set of rules that kind of go along with it which makes the stories more interesting yeah yeah there's a lot of like be careful what you wish for and be careful what you do and you know respect and offer and it's it's yeah it's fascinating um you know maybe one day if you ever i don't mean this condescendingly if you ever get a chance to travel scotty i do yeah. think you would enjoy going to ireland i think maybe that would be a lovely trip for it's, you and erica to go on one day it's on my list of places right? i'd love to see um because it really is because you like the folklore and stuff i think you would really be invested in it quite a bit yeah oh yeah because so. i like like uh, it made this movie made me do a deep dive into some like Celtic folklore after I finished watching it in my car on break. I was just kind of looking up more Celtic folklore ideas and going, ooh, ooh, okay, yeah, right, <laughs> right. Um, so what was I going to say? But yeah, so definitely recommend it. We're not sure where it's going to drop, but when it does, we definitely recommend that you check it out. Um, next one is Remember, and this one's been getting a lot of love from a lot of people, and. Anyway, it's a it's a 103 minute runtime. Six high schoolers stuck in a murderous time loop must find the scattered remains of an unknown victim to break the curse and finally see another day. Uh, another Netflix film, and I can see Dave C wants to watch it, so we'll be careful about not giving spoilers. Uh, this is a very very well made film. Some of the scenes really got me. Other parts kind of pulled me out. I kind of agree with Daniel Luffy's review of some things that were had in this film that did make me be like, why the fuck is this here? This is so boring. I know boring. exactly why now. Right? I, just, um, I know why now. 
But I would say the third act is excellent. Yeah. I had a fucking blast with this movie. This was one Tim Davis had recommended. Like, he was talking it up. And while I was watching, I'm going, you know, there's certain parts of this that scream that it was based off of an anime or a manga. And, yep, I, that's what I just Googled. And sure enough, this is based off of a manga. So really? it has the very, yeah. So that's why there is some of the dialogue and the silly uh, parts in scattered in between it because it's based off the manga and like so and if that's how animes and mangas are they have like a lot of like intense moments and then some light-hearted stuff to kind of put you back in a law and then some more intense moments to suck you back in it's it's just how they do it and i and the, with a the certain music they played throughout some of these scenes i'm going yep that would totally be an anime yep that's an anime I had a fucking blast with this. I think this is really cool. This is when I was telling Erica that I think she would really like that she does dig anime too. And I think she would really dig this one because, yeah, it's live action anime, basically. And it's got some creepy, really creepy moments to it. Like the main antagonist in this is quite frightening. Um, and yeah, it's, I find it, I found like just all around, once again, the story had like while dark and sinister had some heartwarming moments to it as well. Like it definitely like built up this relationship with the friends that basically all these friends are put in different or don't like each other, put in this situation. All right. Forced to get along. And it kind of plays out like that. And I, I, yeah. I thought they did a great job of representing that and showing it. And yeah, just, I found this to be a fun, just really entertaining movie. Like this is, this and strays are tied for my favorite Netflix right now. That's awesome. That's cool. Um, man, I, I agree. It's a really solid film. I just didn't love it as much as you and Tim did, but I do think it's a strong film and fucking slow clap for Netflix, man. I was talking some big smack about them for a couple of episodes and I don't know what they did. It's like, they just got their shit together. Yeah, I was going to say, because last year they had shit for horror. They had nothing. Like, we were struggling to, like, find something to talk about in the horror section for them. This year they've already dropped more than they dropped last year. Yeah, and, like, all good movies. Like, all decent films that we're talking about. Even if, like, well, White Noise wasn't my thing, but maybe other people will like it. And honestly, like, yeah, props to them. Um, I think I'll save this. I'm going to take this other one off and I'm going to wait till Scotty finishes watching it. And we'll talk okay, about yeah, it. Cause I'm time. almost finished now. Yeah. So there's, and that's a screener anyway. I don't think it's out anywhere yet. Um, yeah, no, it oh, it is. Like it me. is out. Like it is out places. It's the outwaters, but we'll talk about it later because people are comparing it to skin Marine, So definitely I want Scott to watch the entire thing before <laughs> we talk about it. Um, so for older films, do you want me to go first or do you want to go first? Um, I'll go first since I just have one. Um, okay. But uh, Erica and I did our 2B Tuesdays uh, this week. And, uh, you know, Scotty Boy was still banned, but she, she lifted the band by the end of it. And <laughs> I, I redeemed myself by introducing her to Tucker and Dale versus Evil. So, yeah. Such a fun movie. Yeah. Such I'll a say, fun I, one. And I knew she'd have a blast with that one. And, yeah, she really liked it. Nice. But what she introduced me to, speaking of anime, is this anime movie called Hell's. And let me bring up these synopsis because this is a uh, started off as one type of movie and turned into something completely different that actually had like a lot of like folklore and backstory to it. And I'm going, oh shit, okay. So Hell's uh, runtime is 117 minutes. Was released in 2008. Uh, we did this on, we watched this on Tubi, so it is available there. Uh, let me see if I can pronounce the name oh here. Oh my gosh, this looks like Sailor Moon, only like tethered. It, it has a similar art style, just uh. But it won a lot of awards for its art style because a lot of it inside is really, like, in the movie is really fascinating. Um, but uh, Amagane Rene had an accident and died while hurrying to school. She suddenly arrived in an awkward school in hell filled with demons. While she is struggling and wishing to go back to the world whence she came from, she makes friends with her demon schoolmates and develops an uncommon bond. That's basically the first half of the movie. The second half becomes uh, the story of Cain and Abel oh, and okay. Adam and Eve. And it's really fascinating. Like, it starts off and I'm like, it's very silly with, like, the way it's played out in anime mm. style. Like, but it's very entertaining. Like, because I, I, I'm not the biggest anime person, or at least I haven't watched enough that yeah. I really like. But there are certain ones that, you know, I've enjoyed throughout my years. And this one kind of, like, falls in that category where I was like, Okay, it's got a little bit of a silly dialogue, but it's, like, very entertaining. It has a very unique art style. It's very fun. 
And then, yeah, some, like, kind of darker moments start playing out, and I'm just going, shit, okay, this went in a direction I did not expect. Okay. And uh, Erica knew I was hooked when we're doing FaceTime while watching this, and I was barely speaking a word because I was just focused on the movie. Were you calling her baby? I wasn't even saying that because I was Oh, my I God. You must have been super focused. <laughs> Like, this is one of her favorite movies, so I think she was quite happy to see that nice. I really dug it. Nice. Yeah, I, That's cool. And the runtime was probably about two and a half hours, thanks to Tubi's commercials, but it didn't ah. feel like Hey, and that's awesome, right? The fact that now, this is definitely not going to be something I would watch, but I no, can I totally see. see the... Yeah, no, not my thing. But this is, that looks, the design does look pretty fucking cool. I'm not going to lie. Some of the images, the sales look pretty intense, so um, nice. And... One part that did have me chuckle, though, is Satan. Uh, his name is Helvis, and he is Satan, but dresses like Elvis and sings and talks like Elvis. Really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, man, that's entertaining. Shit. Yeah, it was nice. quite entertaining. Yeah, but I had a blast with this movie. And people can watch it on Tubi if they want. Yep. Yeah. So I, I've been trying to go back in time and watch films that were really talked about that I missed over. Because I we kind of got through some 2023s this week, and I am getting a little more selective. So other years, I probably would have watched some other ones I saw, but I just couldn't bring myself to watch some of them. I'm like, I know this is going to be a shitty movie. I just don't feel like it. So instead, I decided to watch In the Tall Grass 2019. And have you seen it? I think you have. I have no? not. This is one I missed. Uh, I know it's on Netflix, uh, but yeah, it's yeah. a Stephen King story that I have not watched yet. Or it wait. is. Yes, yes, I did watch it. I'm thinking the other one uh, that's got Thomas Jane in it. Yes, I did watch this one. What did you think? Do you remember? I liked it. You liked it? Yeah, yeah I liked I it too. Yeah, it was very interesting. Um, a good movie about choices. And the guy yeah. that's from The Conjuring's in it that plays uh, Lorraine Warren's husband. I can't remember yeah. his name. Uh, let me look. I'll look it up while you're talking. But yeah, yeah, but he's great in it. Everyone's great in it. It's actually a really, really good film. Um, keeps you guessing the entire time. I can see why it was praised so much when it came out in 2019. I'm glad I kind of jumped on it now. And I guess the one I want to talk about a little Patrick bit. Wilson. Sorry, Patrick Wilson. Um, I guess the one I really want to talk about is The Happening. So what I had I had missed The Happening back when it came out in 2008. And I remember hearing all the flack of, Oh, nothing happened in the happening. Nothing happened in the happening. It was so stupid. Now, I'm going to give a spoiler here. It was the plants, um, which I knew going into this movie. Right. But, you know, I was like, you know, I I've watched all of M. Night Shyamalan and Ding Dong films with the exception of The Happening and Lady in the Water. And I would really like to, if I'm going to have an opinion on him, I think I should watch his entire filmography. So I was able to borrow it from a friend. And honestly, I didn't think it was as bad as people made it out to be. Things do happen all throughout the movie. Right away, you have a mass suicide scene right at the beginning of the film. Yeah, I was going to say, see, I think what I always heard people complain about was the reveal that it was plants the whole time that caused it. Yeah, I, and I think maybe what happened in 2008, that was too early. After having a pandemic and the environmental concerns that we've had watching this movie in 2023, I was like, oh, yeah, fuck, yeah, that could happen tomorrow. Fuck, yeah. Like, that's probably not far off. Like, I think right. he was just too early with this concept, to be honest with you. Makes sense. Um, because, A, things do happen throughout it. People kill themselves constantly. And Marky Walburn isn't the best actor. I don't quite know why he selected him for this role. Maybe he wanted someone that was kind of like wooden. I don't know. He um, wanted somebody that was famous that could bring in people. Maybe, right? Now, John, I always say his name wrong. Lemos, Lemos, uh, he's, a, he's, um, he was recently in the menu. Oh, uh, uh, John Leguizamo. Thank you. He's great. Unfortunately, he's not in it for as long as you would want him to be, but he's in it as well. Um, Zoe Dezenera, Dezenera? De Chanel is in it. Uh, I honestly, I thought this was a really good fucking film. I, I didn't think it was shitty at all. I think it was too much. I think it was too early. I think the concept was too early and yeah, it has some 2008 cheese to it. There's some parts where the writing isn't the best and there's some silly things that happen, but honestly, the thought of like people just starting to kill themselves and you think the air is poison and all along, it turns out the plants giving you a warning that the world, that the earth is not taking it anymore. And then the scientist at the end on the TV compares it to the, the seaweed becoming poison and toxifying the fish. 
Ah, oh, this movie was pretty fucking brilliant. Sorry. <laughs> All the people who thought it was shitty. I just think that if I had watched it in 2008, I think I would have been disappointed. But I think yeah, I watching it in 2023, knowing it was the plants, the whole time I was like, oh, shit, yeah. Yeah, that fucking could happen. Right. Like, it's actually a scary concept. Right. Because you kind of wonder with how fucking much we belittled the – beat up the environment. Like, I'm watching this 15 years after it was made. Let's put that in retrospect, too. This is 15 years later. It is a quite big reality, and the mass suicides are quite upsetting. Like, there's a part – at the beginning at the construction site and people just start jumping off the building. Yeah. Right. So I don't know. I, I feel like people, when they watch this movie, it was too early. It was before it's time. It probably wasn't written the best it could be. This is a movie that should be remade now. And I bet you it would have a much different appreciation to it. It probably would. Right. So that's anyway, that was my thought on the happening. So now I just nice. got to watch lady in the water. And then Avatar. My Avatar. Last, did he or do? No, no, The Last Airbender. Sorry. It's called Avatar The Last Airbender because he did the anime movie, The Last Airbender. Okay. No, I'm not watching that shit. No. <laughs> I'm, just watching, I'm just watching the people movies. I don't watch anime. Well, you no, know it's, this. Not, it's, it's, a, it's a live action. It's based off an anime. Oh, okay. I'll watch that then. Yeah. And I was like, anime. It's, it's just not my thing. Anime it's, is not, not it's not a horror film, so you, yeah, it probably still wouldn't be. Oh, it's action, but uh, yeah, maybe okay. Well, look, 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 let's not set up expectations that may not be met. I'm watching majority I mean, of his horror films. Oh, look, there you go. You said majority. No, right. like, so you didn't say all his filmography, so I'm even. Oh, for fuck's sakes! I did not know he did Airbender, <laughs> or I would not have said that. I would have been like all films, but Airbender, <laughs> and any other film uh, he did that I don't count as horror that I don't want to sit through. Fair um, right. So for what's new, I've been listening to another podcast. It's called Killer Kin. The reason why I like this podcast so much is about twins. It's every single story is about twins. So either twins that like frame each other for murder, commit murder together, like do this crazy shit. Like there's one right now about two twins in London and they're two dudes and they end up getting to the fighting circuit and then they go on to one of them is like the brain crime boss and gets the, the lackey to do stuff for them. And anyway, it's quite fascinating. And you also learn about how twins are raised and how different kind of sometimes they're treated as the exactly the same, dressed the same, made to look the same and how that kind of fucks them up sometimes. The whole concept of this podcast is just basically about twins, how they're raised and how sometimes that can cause them to go crazy or go crazy and want to kill the other one if one's favored over the other. The episodes are about 45 minutes in length, so they're easy listening to. And you can find it on any podcast listening app that you listen to. It's by Investigation Discovery, so they have a variety of series that they have. And it's called Killer Kin, if you're interested. Nice. All right. So uh, I don't think I've actually brought up a video game really on the podcast before. Like I've brought up YouTube channels about video games. But uh, I'm going to talk about a new one that just dropped uh, pretty much right after we recorded the last time, but it's uh, the early access of Sons of the Forest. Mm. Uh, they so, they surprised dropped this for 30 bucks. Like, I, at least surprised me. I didn't hear it was getting released. And it was a different release day than they usually do with most games. Most games are, like, on Tuesdays. This dropped on a uh, Thursday. And I never got a chance to play the first game, but I've played through the – or I've watched playthroughs of the forest – through Neeps Gaming. Aw, Neeps Gaming. Yeah, love that show. <laughs> but um, the forest ends up be the story of the original forest ends up being basically uh, you are with your son during a plane crash, and you wake up in the like Amazon rainforest type situation, and your son is missing, and you are trying to look for your son, and it's a survival game where you gotta eat, drink, build shelter, stuff like that. But what you don't realize is on the island are cannibals that you oh, have to dear. deal with. And then as you get further into the story, there are mutated monsters that hide in the caves. And so the one thing I didn't care about for the forest from watching the playthrough was the fact that it gave you almost a sense of urgency to find your son as a like mm. loose storyline. So it didn't let you just kind of... You just felt weird just going, oh, my son's out there somewhere. I'm just going to go hunting and fishing and build this place because I just want to build a base because of what the hell. It just feels weird. Where in Sons <laughs> of the Forest, the storyline for Sons of the Forest is you are a group of special agent military style soldiers that have been sent to this island to find a billionaire and his family. And then the plane gets shot down and you wake up and once again, survival, cannibals, mutant 
mutated creatures. Um, but I feel because it's a billionaire, I'm going, I don't give a shit. I'm just going to build this house. <laughs> I love it. I love so it. I, I don't feel that sense of urgency to try to complete a game. I can just kind of enjoy it. And I have to say the survival aspect of this is a lot of fun where it's like the hunting and gathering and all that stuff. Because one thing this game has implemented that I have not seen any other survival games do yet is you actually have to deal with the changing seasons. So as you're hunting down food and all this stuff, it's super easy, say, during the spring and summer. But then once it becomes fall and winter, food like wildlife becomes much more scarce because they're all in their dens hiding or they're hibernating and or under frozen lakes that you can't get to the food. Uh, vegetation starts dying off because of winter. So it like becomes you got to start finding like stuff that doesn't go bad, like canned goods and stuff like that. Uh, so it brings another element of survival to the game that just kind of makes you just having to work for it while also dealing with crazy, scary cannibals that are trying to kill you and like use your corpse as a display on their in their camp camps and whatnot, along with really disturbing, disgusting looking mutated monsters throughout. Um, I have not dived too far into it, but from what I can tell, the crafting system in this is very robust, and like you can do a lot of unique things with it. And it, they've and it's fucking gorgeous. Like for an early access, this game is beautiful. Like and it's in an early access, that means they're probably going to be working on this game for a couple more years before it actually gets its official release. Nice. So they're going to be cool. updating it and changing it and. One other thing I'll bring up quickly is uh, everybody in your crew dies when you plane crash, except for one guy that seems to have gotten some type of brain damage or concussion named Kelvin. And then Kelvin can be your helper that you basically give instructions to, like, hey, go hunt fish for me. Hey, go gather wood for me. Hey, go grab this. Go grab this. So especially if you're playing it by yourself, it saves you time from having to go do all that mundane tasks yourself, and you have, like, a AI companion that'll go do that for you. Like, if he dies in the game, though, he does not return to life like your character does. So, gotta be careful with that. But I find that, uh -huh. like, a very unique, fascinating feature that no other survival game that I've noticed has done, which is just more, you know, helpful for the people that want to play on their own. It just That's helps cool. with... Yeah, it's very fun. Uh, I've been playing it with my coworker. Uh, we've probably sunk about four hours in so far, and I've started a game on my own, and... Yeah, I'm really digging it. I just don't have a lot of time for video games nowadays, but uh, I definitely recommend if you have a PC gaming computer, uh, then I definitely recommend if you're a fan of these types of games, because it's definitely survival and then survival horror together. Uh, the, I definitely recommend it. It's only 30 bucks. It's a really good deal, and there's plenty nice. to do in this game. That's nice. It's good that we bring the variety of you know podcasts, <laughs> in case anyone doesn't have enough podcasts and then in video games that you can play as well too, right? Yeah, like I've been you could listen to, to the podcast and play the video game, especially games like this because there really isn't much to it. Like there's just ambient right. noises. There you go. We've made your night just perfect of the things that you can do as well as listen to our podcast. I don't know if you want to listen to us while you play these games as well. Um, just don't take advice that we give because Scott and I probably wouldn't survive. Um, yeah, well, yeah, mm, yeah, yeah. Like, <laughs> we would survive. We would try. We give it our good old college. We'd do track. better than people in like uh, Outback. Outback, yeah. Doe Falls. Yes, we would. We'd do probably better than them. We would probably go, um, but, hey, there's a car here. Well, you know what? I'm not was that? That's a low bar, though. I was gonna say, but like, at least we would know better than to look at a car and go, "Hey, you know what? Sounds like good drinking, antifreeze, and windshield washer fluid." Yes. <laughs> Be like, I've always wanted to die slowly and have my insides burned out. This and I've also the way to become. Go. I also wanted to become obsessed with drinking my own pee. <laughs> always, my dream come true. Um, speaking of. Outback and Snowfalls, we're going to talk about movie posters that have disappointed and impressed us. So for our out of the dark topic, I suggested to Scotty, because we have a friend of ours, Dave C from the Exploding Head podcast, who always talks about his movie poster test. And Dave believes that he can predict whether a movie will be good or not based on a movie poster. And I, I usually have, pretty accurate, right? I have never been a predictor of things from movie posters i when i was younger i do remember the video store near my house was giving away movie posters and i went and got them and put them all over my bedroom because i thought that was the coolest thing to do and then i brought them to the youth center i was a part of extra ones and got them to put them up there 
Um, <laughs> me on my bike holding all these fucking posters. Anyway, um, so I've I've always found posters interesting, but I don't necessarily rely on them for anything. I see them more as, well, that's attractive. Maybe it got it gets my eye, but usually I'll trust a trailer more for a movie. What about you, Scott? I am definitely the poor sap who will get sucked in by movie posters. Hence why I watch some of the films I've watched for 2022s, 2023s that end up not being great. Because they have a poster that I'm going, hmm, this looks interesting. And I'll watch it without looking into it. So that, what makes a poster look interesting to you? Oh, that's a good question. Um, The art direction, for sure. Like, sometimes... And it, all, it always varies. Like, it could be something as simple as, say, the Jaws poster with mm-hmm. the shark coming out of the water with the woman swim through water. That poster has always been iconic and caught my eye. Um, shocker, just because I love the movie, Tim Davis, doesn't mean that I'm going to give props to this poster, but uh, the Gremlins poster. That poster, if I watch that now, it's just, you know, it's literally just Billy's hands holding the box and you see Gizmo's little mogwai hand sticking out of it. Um, that poster probably not would not have sold me if I was looking okay. at it today. But like, I still find it a good poster, but it just wasn't something that would have been like, oh, I got to see that. Like, Obviously, I love the poster now because obviously I know the movie and it's iconic to that movie. Um, but one that uh, Tim Davis did an episode based off of this, this movie Topic, poster yeah. specifically yeah. um, was Evil Dead Rises poster. That poster is, it's okay, but it's it does not scream evil dead to me. It's mm. very generic looking and is a complete ripoff of smile. And so like, if I didn't know it was evil dead, I would have looked at that and went, Oh, that was made by uncorked or something and would have probably just ignored it. Um, but you know, like older posters, like <clears throat> evil dead, the original one with the woman coming out of the grave and her hand raising that's iconic. I would have movie posters like that. Sell me uh, the new Hellraiser poster. Like, yeah, that sells me. Um, and yeah, like obviously I uh, got duped and got banned from Tubi because of the pool party massacre poster. Because I'm a sucker for what also looks to be cheesy posters. Um, yes, but there's something about that poster that <clears throat> I like. But the movie terrible. <laughs> So it, it just varies for me. Like, it just almost like I got to be in the mood or something for, but it's just art. I'm like, I, I love a different variety of art. And some of it just makes me go, ooh, that looks cool. Oh, that looks silly. Ooh, that looks cheesy. Like, and I just hope for the best when I won't click on them. But I, yeah, it just I all agree. depends. I agree. I think posters have several different purposes. One, I think that, and I'm sorry, Dave. I think it's naive and ridiculous to judge a movie on a poster art. I really do. I think a trailer is a better judge of whether that movie will be good or not. Here's an example. Hashtag float has actually a really cool poster. That, yes, that was going to be one right? that. Oh, oh. Um, and it ended up not being that great. Now, some posters are really, really good at being straight up to the point of what it is. We look at the poster from fall last year. It's basically the girls at the top of the tower and the tower is propelled very, very, very high, almost like you're in space. So it gives the illusion of what, you know, or not the illusion, but the direct idea of what this film's going to be about. It's about height being far above, you know, fear of heights falling, all that kind of stuff. It communicates it clearly. Then you have other posters like resurrection that came out last year. And it's just her face with a red line across it. That doesn't really say anything. And Resurrection yeah. was an absolutely, completely fucking well done film. Us is another poster that's great. You just have the main character with a tear coming down her face and a mask. Another excellent fucking film. I don't know. I Black Phone is Ethan Hawke with his mask on. A lot of people liked Black Phone last year. That was a very, very I, popular movie. Yeah, I like that. Um, and it just shows the villain. That's That's what you see. Um, a poster that does look cheesy is Jurassic World because it literally has every single star that's on it that they yeah. kind of threw onto it from last year. And then, like, as you look at older movie, movie posters, you're right. You have, like, the House on Haunted Hill. You have the Night of the Living Dead. You have how those posters looked at that time. Like, you have the the House on Haunted Hill shirt. I think I got yeah. that shirt for you. Love that right? Poster. Right? So, like, I don't know. I feel as if... Sometimes you'll see a poster and you may think it may look the movie 
may make the movie look better than it is, or it doesn't give the credit to the movie being a good movie. Yes, because it all depends on who they hire right? for their artist, too. And I feel like some posters are like, this is what it's going to be about, right? Like, Evil Dead, the hand coming out of the ground, grabbing the chick, kind of gives an impression of what the film will be about. Yes. The screen poster is just a chick with her hand over her mouth. Like, I guess... If you just saw that poster for Scream and you didn't know what the movie was, it just looks like a ripoff of Silence of the Lambs. Yeah. Somebody, you know what I mean? Like that's, oh. that's where I, and they're right beside each other right now. So I'm looking at both of them. And if I knew nothing about either movie, I would have no idea what the poster meant. So I just don't understand how you can judge a movie by its poster when you don't really know what it's going to be about at the end of the day. Without it being very clear on the poster. And I will say um, there is a good comparison right here of uh, 80s horror and I'd say horror in the last 10 years Mm. rely a lot more on the catchy poster art to lure you in because before you really didn't need like after like after the VHS days where you know in the 80s they were pumping out horror films like crazy and to get your attention they would have these really cool cover art to grab your attention in the rental places to Mm -hmm. make you rent it and 90% of the time the movie was shit because of it but yeah. and that's kind of the same thing now. Instead of walking around a uh, rental place, you're scrolling through streaming services. So they're yeah. trying to make art. They're trying to make unique looking posters again to kind of grab your attention. Which is I, I find I just realized that I think that's kind of cool because it's like yeah. it's it is like perusing a video store but just digitally. Where yeah, after before streaming was a thing and when rental places were just kind of like a dime a dozen and kind of dying out, poster art got lazy. I mean, look at all the screen posters that had all the the, the hovering faces of all the famous people on it really didn't yeah. tell you what the story is about like it, there was like a really bad dark time for posters and because the, they didn't need to sell you that way marketing wise well and then looking at the 80s posters i have here like i'm looking at the friday the 13th posters and even the second one it's a it's a picture of them at the camp with a knife in the body like it's yeah. pretty obvious what that's going to be about the human centipede one you know we go a little bit more modern it's people in the centipede pushed up against the glass you know, it's, yeah, you're going to see a human centipede. Like, there's some posters that are just so, you know, this is what you're going to get. This is what you're going to watch. You know, the Blair Witch Project, you just have the head. Yet again, if you didn't know what the Blair Witch Project was, I don't know if this poster would give it away for you. Right. It's just really, really fascinating. I think what it comes down to is you're right. Poster art is there to intrigue you like cabin in the woods with the cabin that is disoriented like a rubik's cube Mm -hmm. it's supposed to kind of tie in bring in your eye for interest and you look at it and then maybe you read the synopsis or maybe you go and you watch a preview and i do like poster art that has bright colors like i'm looking at the night house poster i really like the colors on this the sky is red the water is blue it's just our main protagonist standing on a dock in the middle of the of the lake i do like that look but i don't know i just i guess when i look at a poster art i look at it and i go gee that looks really cool is it going to represent the movie and i don't necessarily expect it to as much like it follows looks like the the cover of an rl stein film which makes sense because it's kind of filmed in like an rl stein written novel actually Which film was that? I think about it. it follows oh yes yes right um you know jordan peele's posters tend to be pretty clear to what the movie is going to be about um i don't know it's a it's a really interesting concept though i would love to have a room just covered of mo- movie posters because i do think they are aesthetically pleasing to the eye yeah. Uh, but they are not the decision that I use in order whether I'm going to watch a movie or not. A trailer is reading a synopsis is like we've seen enough movies. Like I was scrolling through Prime last night. All I would need to do is read the synopsis to be like, OK, I know what this is going to be. This is going to be a slasher. OK, this is going to be a procession. OK, this is going to be a stalker. OK, this is good. like and occasionally it throws you off occasionally. Yeah. But generally speaking, if you watch enough movies, you're going to be like, I know what that's going to be. Um, so I don't know why people will hold on to the poster art so much as like their first impressions. I just, I don't, of what the film will be. I just don't 
think that there's a, con- a strong enough connection there, but that's just me. Yeah, like for me, like I say, I think mainly for me because I don't have time, like because I watch movies at work a lot, so I don't have time to like click on each individual movie, read the synopsis, then decide. I just kind of scroll through and go, huh, that poster looks cool. All right, I'll hit play. And just mm, kind of I guess happens. so. It just all depends, like, you know, I guess in the situation. But for me, yeah, posters always lure me in. And like I say, it's not always a good thing. Because like I say, some really bad movies have some awesome, awesome art. But Well, here's the thing. I would have skipped out on movies because I didn't like the poster if that was the case. Right. Like, well, and I was saying, like, yeah, like, that's how I end up finding, like, uh, certain movies, like, when I have more time and, like, read synopsises or watch trailers, then I'll watch movies that the poster art may not attract me, but it's all it's all because I have time to actually look into the film. Because, yeah, I kind of do a mixture of what you do and then, pick, you know, of just picking by movie poster as well. It's kind of a like, variety of depends on my situation. House of Darkness was a red silhouette, and that was a great fucking movie that not a lot of people talked about last year. Yeah. You know, if I was just going by poster art, I never would have watched that film. Oh, see, I would have because it was very right. simple, but it was catching to my eye. Or Take Back the Night. That also doesn't look that appealing to me. I don't know. I guess maybe less things look appealing for me, and that's why I don't uh, – <laughs> maybe why I'm more likely to try. Um, but, yeah, I do – I probably rely the most on hearsay on what people have yes. said. I probably rely second on synopsis, synopsis and trailers, and I I put very little stock into poster art. I, do, I enjoy poster art, and I think it's cool, and I enjoy looking at it. It's just I don't know if it's – it's not a decision I make, and I don't think it should factor into a decision whether to watch a movie or not. Sorry, Dave C. Um, but that's cool. It works for you, and that's your prerogative, and that's awesome, man. Like, keep you doing you. Uh, Scott likes to use the same thing as well. Unfortunately, I guess he's not as good as you are because he picks shitty movies as well. <laughs> like well, I think watch. it's also because I'm not, like, looking at it going – Okay, judging by this, like the way it looks, I'm like, this could be a bad film. Like, it's just, if it's got good art, I'll be more intrigued. But if it's got bad art, nah. Well, and like, what's good and bad to different people is yeah. different, right? You know, everything's always subjective to what you enjoy and what, you know, is there, you know, there's some things that are objectively a good film. We talked about this in the past. And then there's things that are just not a good film. Um, but yeah, I would love to have a room completely full of poster art and even my whole house, actually. I think that'd be fun. I mean, hell, my basement's, fun to look at. Much, my basement's pretty much full of movie posters. It is, actually. I remember you did a tour. We did a two- tour of our places back in the day of our horror stuff years ago. Yeah, put, put it on, them on our page. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you do have some really cool posters. That's true. You do. You have some cool shit in your house, for sure. Yeah, so I plan on, like, because... Because I don't use my basement very much, I plan on once I kind of start repainting some rooms, uh, framing and transferring posters from downstairs, upstairs, into certain into what will probably be my podcasting room. Oh, nice! That's exciting. Yeah. Before we go, I, I, you mentioned you're excited for Scream Six. Are you going to be going this weekend with Erica to watch it? Uh, I don't know yet. We haven't discussed it. Um, we may just kind of just because we we're going to be busy Saturday, but uh. <laughs> But then, like, Friday, I'm not sure. We may or may not. We'll see how it all plays out. But uh, I would like to go see it in theaters at some mm. point, whether it's this coming weekend or next weekend or whatever. But, like, yeah, you know, at some point I wouldn't mind because, for one, I no matter how the movie is, like, if it's not a movie I'm really excited about, it's still a horror film, and I still love to support horror in theaters if I can. Absolutely. I agree. Now, Scream doesn't need that much support. It's a very well-making, money-making franchise, so I right. wouldn't uh, lose sleep if you don't go support them. But... I hear the sentiment of what you're saying, and a lot of people are buzzing about it. Um, it was a movie that I do not think needs to be made. I will stand by that. Yep. But but that being said, you know, if it's entertaining and it's a good time, that's awesome. Yeah, all hey. I ask is break the formula. If you break the formula in a fun way, I'm all about it. Yeah, we'll see what they do, right? It will be really interesting to see what happens. Um, hopefully between the, now and when we record next, we'll both be able to see it. Maybe we'll do a spoiler on how we feel the franchise has gone and where they can go from here in our out of the dark section. That might be a cool thing to talk about. Yeah, because it sounds like Scream 7 has already been greenlit. Oh, my God. Well, hey, you know what? They're making money. They, I did like the TV series. I did like the first two seasons of the TV series. I did enjoy it. Um, so, hey, they can make money and it can be entertaining. All the power to them, right? Right. Young stars getting more, getting, you know, more fame through that. Awesome. Good for yeah, them. like I say, and the more horror does well in theaters, the more likely theaters will start bringing in more horror films, and people want to make more horror films. Hey, you're not wrong there, right? And and that's the thing: the more horror is successful, and the more that it can seen as a money-making, lucrative 
genre then you know we go back to the good old days of the 80s where they were super cheap to make and everyone was making a horror film maybe we'll get back to that we'll right. get back to that kind of inform that that level of, of variety we already have in the sense if you look at international and streaming and all that kind of stuff there's lots of stuff out there to watch but what makes it to the theater is a little more limited so yeah and i gotta um, say uh theatrically i mean so far we've had two big hitters for uh theaters megan and cocaine bear yeah no totally so it's a shame that Knock at the Cabin was a little bit more pushed, and yeah. I wish Winnie, I wish uh, Winnie the Pooh, Blood and Honey got more of a stronger run in theaters. But I am glad that it at least got some screenings at places, and there are some places where it is still playing. Um, hopefully, we'll see more from that director too, because uh, I think he wants to do the Peter Pan and some other stuff that's come uh, public domain. So there should be right. some interesting yeah. stuff coming down the coming down the pipe soon. Yeah, I'll be. I still want to see that movie. I'm hoping it comes to VOD soon. Oh man, it should. It should be a matter of time. But uh, anyway, we will see you again in two weeks' time. Hopefully, Scotty and I have watched more horror movies by then that we talk about in our 2023s. Uh, hopefully, some big hitters like Scream Six, and uh, I don't know anything else that drops on Shuddy between now and then. Shuddy's been a little slow as of late, so I'm hoping that some uh, some big hitters drop on there sometime soon. So I'm if sure you are not you think so, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. All right. So if you're not a member yet, please join our uh, our Legion podcast Patreon page. We are part of the Legion network. You can find them on Spotify. But if you want to become a Patreon member, you can get early access to shows and you can get codes and all that kind of stuff. And it's only $3 a month. And if you haven't joined yet, what are you waiting for? <laughs> Join us. What are you waiting for? How come you haven't signed up yet? Join us. <laughs> what are you waiting for? Please join we us. Need, we need to get a low-cut shirt for you and big titties, and you need to, like, spin around and, like, video it. you just spinning, screaming that. <laughs> See, that should be busy. what uh, I should be the spokesperson for Legion Podcast Patreon. Just, right? Like, yeah. just share that video everywhere. That's your Patreon. Pre- that's what you get when you get the Patreon pledge. You get pictures of Scott sexually post everywhere. That's what you get. Yeah. Hey, they might they might up their members now that you're off the market. People got to get what they can get, right? Like that's true. You got to make know? that money somehow. You're a hot commodity, right? I've, Erica told me she doesn't care if you dance on a pole. It doesn't make you a hoe mm. as long as you make that. <laughs> she doesn't even care if you're working till three as long as you're leaving with her. You know that song from Usher, right? Yes, I know that one. Okay. <laughs> such a funny song i'm glad to call you my bitch <laughs> it's so funny uh, oh, you and your pop references i know because i i actually listen to popular music i don't just sit in my basement and play video games and listen to blind guardian over and over again hey i listen to ice nine kills too and falling in reverse and... you're like it's so good only five people like this band but it's so amazing <laughs> Hey, I like Ice Nine fans. Kills. I know. I like Ice Nine Kills. I just really? like making fun of you. What is, kind of music does Erica like? Does she like Ice Nine Kills? Uh, yeah, she was really digging them because I kind of introduced her to Because you forced her on her? Like, did she get in your car and you're like, we're going to listen to my CDs and my CDs are really good. Can you like my CDs? <laughs> she was like, yeah, oh, it's so she, good. <laughs> she did something very sweet. While I was like, I did like show her some videos because I think the videos are what really like attract them. Was the, it videos uh, of you with the fake tits on? No, videos <laughs> of Ice Nine Kills, jackass. <laughs> But uh, while I was on the cruise, she messaged me saying, well, just because I miss you, I'm listening to your one of your favorite bands, Ice Nine Kills. And oh, she she's, really... She's fucking into you, huh? Yes. I, Man, I'm, I'm, I'm... extra large drink that you have in the <laughs> big buttery bowl of popcorn. Oh, and the biceps. You just... Ark, I just like rolled up his sleeve was, and no, started my flexing. I was itching like, my arm or scratching my arm. You know, like we are in Michigan and I asked her if she wanted to go to the gun show. <laughs> Oh, dear God. That'd be me. That's how I would hit on Erica. That's how I'm going to hit on her when I see her. It's fair. I'll be like, you think Scotty's guns are big. <laughs> I'll be like trying to squeeze my biceps so hard so it looks bigger than it actually is. Look, Erica, if you look really close. <laughs> see, the problem is, Heather, you're not from America, so there is no such thing as gun show in Canada. America's know, got all a, the guns. It's just moose shows. and po- Oh, man, I had a fucking poutine the other day. It was so good. I was so Canadian. I didn't even take a picture. I was going to take a picture and send it to you, but I fucking stuffed it in my fat face before. <laughs> right? 
Poutine. Like I got halfway through it and I was like, it's that place I took you to, the Arbor. Yeah, that place, place was just awesome. Around. Yeah, I was like, fucking stuff off that face, and then I was like, oh well, he doesn't want to see it now. It's just like fucking gravy at the bottom. <laughs> <laughs> Tater. It's got what I ate. You ate a thing of gravy. Wow. Impressive, Heather. Is there something that you need to talk about? <laughs> oh, good lord. But yeah, poutine's fucking the bomb. If y'all haven't had poutine, fucking get it. True Canadian poutine, that is. True Canadian. None of this fucking American European impersonation yeah, bullshit. With the deep fried cheese curds and whatnot. That's just dumb. Get, get the real yeah, cheese curds dumb. and melt on your get the real cheese curds and melt on your fries. Yum. Dope it, dope it. So but dumb. uh so dumb, dumb. just like just like Tim Davis, he's also dumb. He doesn't understand oh. <laughs> he doesn't understand deep movies. Just, hey, he compared me to Chris Benoit the other day. Honestly, honestly I mean, he deserves worse for saying that one. Honestly, he's so funny though. He makes fun of me. And like I'll be at the gym. I gotta stop listening to their podcast at the gym because I'll be like <laughs> you know, working on these pythons for Erica when she comes up and <laughs> They'll say something about me being like a bitch or like how the new Karen is HPs or like, I don't know, just like something great, degradingly horrible. Like you had to come back from your podcast and or your trip away and then podcast with me and how horrible that is. <laughs> like they just say the funniest shit. Right. And like I'll start laughing out loud and like I'm laughing at people making fun of me. But I know they're well, I hope they're kidding. Well, no, they kidding. say it every time because they feel bad after making fun of you. Like, we're kidding, Heather. We love you. <laughs> I know. Like, I'm sure they're worried that someday something will happen to me and then Tim will just be like, he'll have to give up podcasting and he'll never be able to talk about it again because he'll blame himself. And then I'll come back and haunt him in Australia and I'll, like, steal his Jaws stuff. Can you imagine if I took his Jaws poster? Oh, like, can you be, imagine? He would cry. He would cry. He'd be like – I, we would actually get on the Conjuring film. They would ha- he would have somehow find like the Warren's daughter or great granddaughter and bring her over and try to get her to like fucking exercise me out of the house. Like it would just be, oh man, that's a goal. That's a hashtag life goal. After life goal, <laughs> haunt him. Go to Australia. I was looking at the flight. It's a long fucking flight. Twenty four hours. Or my, something. Yeah, I'm gearing myself up for it one day. But shit, it's a long. Yeah. It's a long journey. It is but... a journey I would love to take at some point, though. Well, I'm a pretty big world traveler, so I'll make sure I'll let you know. Oh, how Jesus it's... Christ. <laughs> hey, so am I now. I know. You're like, I've also been to the Caribbean, Heather. <laughs> I've been to San Juan, Puerto Rico. I mean, I know that's still part of the U.S., but. <laughs> it's like, it's not, though. <laughs> They don't vote on our president, so they, it doesn't count. It doesn't count, guys. <laughs> well, I'm excited for us to talk about Scream 6 after we see it. I, what is it? Scream? Six Cream. Six Cream. Every time he says that, I was like, oh, ice cream. <laughs> oh, man. I I just, get cream. Whenever I hear Rob or Tim say it, I just hear cream. And I'm like, oh, yeah, I want you guys' as cream. Mm. Well, speaking of Rob and Tim, you will be hearing them very shortly. Probably our next episode that we will drop will be the wrestling one after this one. Um, Orgy! <laughs> and the four of us will be on to talk about all our thoughts wrestling and Scott will be a fucking know-it-all and be like, well, actually, I um, watched a bunch of YouTube videos yesterday. Um, unless his girlfriend's down, then he'll be like, I didn't have time to watch videos. <laughs> I'm too busy having a life. Sorry, guys. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Well, it's always been a blast. Look forward to seeing all you guys soon. We'll be talking about Six Cream. We'll be doing wrestling. Mickey will be barking in the back. So in the meantime, do you have anything to say to the good people, Scotty? Until next time, kitties. Bark, bark, bark. Unpleasant dreams. See you later. Bye. Bye.